Welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So this is a 60 by 80 centimetre canvas I made during the week. And I'm going to attempt to make something similar. So all that is required is some paint brushes, some water in a tub, red, blue and yellow paint, black and white paint. I'm using acrylic and this is some Winsor & Newton acrylic paper. Um, you could just use a sturdy cartridge paper or watercolour paper instead. So I'm starting the painting off with just some outlines. That's all it is. I just chose the blue to make the lines with. I like the kind of grid effect that Paul Clay would use when he would kind of put his lines down and then, you know, bring them out to the edges of the paper. I'm sure he worked in a much more refined manner than I just described. <laughs> but I like that. It, it helps me fill up the whole paper. Anyway, so now I'm coming in and I'm just sort of putting some colour down and, you know, so I've got all the outlines in blue and now I've got some red and yellow and you can see there the red's sort of starting to form its own kind of shape so I'm almost having like a path if you like um with the colours now I'm starting to mix the colours and add in some of the white and black so I've been looking a lot into colour theory lately and um I never realised that colour was um, something that helps you build the composition and the depth. And what I've learned is that hot colours will look closer to you, colder colours will look further away. Saturated as in the purer the colour, like that red is a pure colour, will look closer to you and then the less saturated where you're adding other colours black or white to them will appear further away so if you take that red that's next to the pink or even the blue there you know that red looks closer to us than the pink and the blue does um so when I made the canvas I showed you at the start I very much built it on top of that idea of thinking about the colours and how the colours are the ones that are creating the depth and overall the kind of shapes as well. So at this stage of the painting it's almost like a kind of warm-up where you're kind of getting to know your colours that you're using, that you're, you know, you're experimenting with, um, you know, placement of the kind of more focal point colours, the more supporting, less saturated colours, thinking about your hot and cold, really just kind of getting to see where it's going because this will change completely but I couldn't get to the end without going through this phase if you like. So here you can see that I'm starting to just put all the colours together and just base it on kind of um, how dark and light it is, how saturated it is and whether it's hot or cold. And you can see there just now that those red lines really, to me, are still the most dominant on here, although there is a bit of yellow in the kind of bottom right, middle bottom right that, that's looking quite dominant as well and actually it's really quite um oh, kind of reinforces kind of what I've been learning to see it like this so I'm just working I haven't let anything dry now this paper is 16 by 20 inches so it's pretty large. So by the time you work your way around it with the acrylic paints, you know, they do they do dry pretty fast. Um, but at this stage, we're just really creating shapes, creating lines, creating colours. We're just 
kind of seeing where it goes. I have sped this up two and a half times um, because it actually took a very long time to make this when you add in the drying time and the mixing of the colours. And the mixing of the colours took longer than the actual painting of the colours. But I think a lot of that was just to do with um, an experience on my part. The other thing I did as well was I tended to make far too many colours. Now, this is a kind of cool blue-grey, so it's very desaturated. There's only a bit of indigo in with that black and white. And you can see how cool it is and also how... The other colours around it just stand out so much more. And you'll see I'm going to put on some a warmer grey of a similar saturation, but with the red instead of the indigo. Um, and you'll actually see that because that's warmer, that it, it actually you can see that it's it's it looks like it's coming towards you more, even and amongst the other saturated colours. I'm looking forward to actually being a bit more proficient in this. And I'm really hoping that I have... I, I'm confident I've picked it up um, properly. And I know there's lots more details to learn about it. But I feel like I've kind of got... a you know, an understanding that I can then learn from. And it's took a long time to get to this stage, actually. But I do feel like it's opened up a whole new door. Now, we're still doing the, the, the cool greys. This is um quite a lighter cool grey. The other thing is... I'd, while I've kind of been showing the colour mixing here, as we progress, I tend to leave that out a bit more because it does take up a lot of the video and it's also pretty self-explanatory and it's really just about you finding your balance of what what feels the right level of saturation, darkness, lightness, etc. I still use value as the main consideration for um the placement like I use the yellow and I make a purple and those two are my fully saturated colours that I use as the sort of main images and everything else works around that. Now this is the warmer greys going on and can you tell the difference? I know the red's shining through from behind a bit but even so, it's really quite amazing against the cooler grey. That was quite a big um, moment for me, kind of seeing that. So, because I've kind I've made this canvas previously, I'm thinking about the shapes that I'd used before while I'm applying these colours and I know that shape that I just filled in isn't right but it's fine because at the moment we really are just experimenting but when we come the next stage we're going to you know sort of put in a more structured line work and we're going to make the shapes all of a similar colour but we apply that colour quite thinly. So all these colours that are underneath will still have an impact and kind of shine through a bit. Now, I've made a, a desaturated, a kind of grey-yellow, but you can see that there's so much more yellow in that compared to the other greys. Whereas in a normal scenario, that would look very grey and it's just... I just love being able to kind of see that now. And having applied that yellow grey, it's made me want to add more colour to the cool greys and the warm greys that we've made. 
I would also say just experiment with your different reds, blues and yellows. Um, I've used cadmium red, deep hue, indigo and lemon yellow here. But really, I would just different combinations and different paintings. I mean, you could make a series. I'm making a series here, so I'm sticking to these colours. But overall, you know, experiment with different shades of the red, blue and yellow together. So this is me. I've made purple. I think it's red, blue, and I might have put a little bit of black in just to make it darker. So I'm kind of putting down an outline with the shapes. So we've been kind of practicing those shapes already in the picture. So I'm making this kind of structure that we can then use as our sort of skeleton to build on. Now, again, some of these shapes will blend together. Some of them, you know, will take out completely. This is our kind of real starting point of the picture coming together. I also find that the obviously when you add white to a colour, you're making it more opaque. So this um, purple doesn't have any white in it. And that indigo and the cadmium red deep hue, they're sort of semi-opaque. So there is a bit of transparency with the colours that are underneath as well. And this is me putting in the paler colour. So basically, I've kind of made some outlines, some edges, if you like, and some um, shapes. And as we go here, you'll see that um, I'll kind of adapt as I'm putting the shapes down. I think I'm using quite a stiff brush just now as well because we're covering quite large areas and obviously we're painting quite messily. We're not taking time to do, you know, nice edging or anything. So here, I think I change it here. Yep, I do. And then what's happened is I've ran out of purple. <laughs> And instead of taking time to mix more, all I do is I kind of pick up a bit of red and black. And it's not quite got the same effect, but I'll fix it as we go. It just allows me to continue with what I'm doing, kind of stay in the zone. You can see that my, my pale colour gets um, steadily pinker as well. <laughs> So the shapes that I'm making, I kind of felt when I did the outline, it was like a, a sort of tree structure, which I'm more than happy with. And the shapes that I'm making, um, you know, it could be viewed as like sort of, you know, flower petals all mixing together. To me, I like to think of it as more sort of each one's like an individual um, living thing like a cell or something and they're all just trying to fit into the space that that's that that's my kind of thought process while I'm making it but again it's it's the it's it's the viewer that decides and also I just think it's interesting to look at and if somebody gets something out of looking at the picture then that just makes me very happy I just turned it around there. I felt like the shapes that I'd made were more suitable for the top. And also, it's easier for me to work closer than it is further away, even though I'm still working in the further away part just now. So here, it's actually quite hard to keep all those kind of petal shapes going without having... A sort of more central point where they can they can merge around so I have created almost like um I would think of it as like being the middle of the plant the stamen part maybe and it means that 
you know, I've got something to fix them around, to give them, to, to allow them to continue being that shape. I hope that makes sense, kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> Can you see as, you know, the pale colours starting to dry in areas, that the other colours are shining through from underneath? I just think it's um, it's a lovely part of the whole process of making it, and I'm really um enjoy using a limited palette because I feel like it does connect all the layers together. So after this, um, the next thing that I'm going to do is so kind of thinking about setting the values. So for me, the, this is the lightest value I'm doing and it's yellow and it's got the tiniest little bit of black in it. And I'm going to use this and work out where I want to place it. It does change a couple of times because it's like a dance. You're going backwards and forwards because when you make one change... You know, it affects the rest of the picture. It's about maintaining that balance and interest. So, right away, the purple lines are, you know, the darkest value. And this yellow is the lightest value. And I've decided that that's the way I want it to stay. Because, well, it also makes my job a bit easier that these have been defined. I think it's central to the kind of composition of the picture. I used to base everything on the shapes and the outlines and maybe thinking about and value. But I never thought about the other colours, about the them being hot and cold, saturated or, you know, unsaturated. So basically how grey they are, the more grey they are, the more into the background they go. And it's kind of as well, I need to learn about what's most important. Is one of them more important than the other? And also about placing co contrasting colours together. I would always sort of at the focal point area, you know, I would have the darkest and the lightest together, the complementary colours together. That's just made me realise I'm actually defining, I'm in control of the picture here instead of trying to see what I can make work as I'm getting towards the end to make the most, um, you know, the focal point to lead the eyes around the picture. Whereas having this awareness of the colours and how they they will affect the picture right from the start, it actually allows me to look at it as a whole and to build it from the start so I can have my ideas from the start. Yeah, it felt really good doing the canvas and then it felt really good doing this as well. I felt like I had... I mean, I like to work intuitively so... You know, I don't have lots of sketches done beforehand, but I still felt there was an element of being able to plan as I go with it, which was nice. The other thing here as well is this blue is too pure, but it's absolutely beautiful. So I'll leave it on for a wee while <laughs> just so I can look at it. I can see, I can see a, a blue, this blue being um, the, 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 the sort of highlight colour in the future coming up. It's just lovely. So, to me, this is very much the kind of middle section of making the picture. This is the kind of dance stage. We've got, we've got our colours, we've got our shapes. We've kind of worked out where, mostly worked out, 
the kind of highlights the light the lightest and the darkest and then now it's just about finding the best placement for all the other colours and um you know the shapes and also um towards the end as well what we do with the right now we've very much got dark outlines and coloured in shapes but I want to you know towards the end I'll look towards oh I made that far too dark so now I've made it far too light <laughs> anyway I digress so yeah towards the end what I start doing is I kind of start merging the the colours and the outlines you know the outlines and the shapes with the colours and I think that just adds a nice complexity to it and also kind of you know it's hard to tell what what's overlapping what if that makes sense so I've left this whole process in as well um obviously I've sped it up and I have um you know I've as it goes on, I show less of the mixing of the colours. Now, I very much keep it simple with the the shapes um, being kind of quite solid colours. However, I do do a little bit of a sort of pattern in a few of them. Like, for example, you can see that there's a blue leaf with a pink outline so that shape there you know I would call that a pattern now this that this leaf petal cell shape changes color <laughs> constantly and because I'd had yellow in that and I took it away I then added it in right at the top but it's not the right place for that yellow to be but we come back to it and that's part of what the dance is I also felt they were all quite similar in shape and some of them were even quite similar in size. So what I've done is with one of the kind of dominant yellow ones, I'll call it, I've added quite a curve in that one. So as we go as well, we, we do make slight changes that help um, make it more interesting. And you can see sometimes when I mix the colour, they're just a bit too similar. So when it comes to mixing them and I'm thinking about values, at this stage, apart from that yellow and that pinky colour that's too bright, very much my intention is to work in kind of quite mid values. And then it's easier to kind of put in lighter and darker where necessary. Um, what I do is I just look at it as a black and white photograph. See, I've done it again. This is even lighter again. So I'll make it darker. We get there in the end with this. This is quite an odd shape compared to the rest of it. But at the same time, it's not really one that I want to be a focal point. So I have to, you know, I want it to merge into the background and for you not to notice right away that it's a bit different to the rest. At this stage as well, I very much make a colour for one use. So, for example, the green that I've used, um, you know, I just made one batch of that, used it up. Or often what I did was I used it as the start of a new colour. Um, you know, like I would add much more yellow into it and make it like a a, a a yellowy green or I would add a lot of red into it to try and get a purpley effect from it. Anyway, at this stage, it's really about just a sort of one batch colour. Oh, there's my blue going. And then once we get to the later stages, once we've kind of got the shapes and the colours mostly defined, then... 
I kind of make colours up to use again and again. Because I'm basically going to be covering smaller areas and I'm going to be making frequent changes to keep the balance and the interest. But you can see it's starting to come together a bit here. I think as much as I love that blue, you know, taking that out has shown, you know, the the impact of having a lot of the colours desaturated and more of a grey tone. I also used to very much spread the colour evenly around the picture. So for example, that yellow, I would have it in sort of different areas of the picture. But what I've been choosing to do is kind of more have a designated area and then there's a quiet area where that colour wouldn't be. Or for example, the purple that I'm doing just now, There'll be a quiet area where that won't appear. And I've started doing that and I don't know I don't know if that's accurate or not. But I've started doing some value studies where you take the masters and you very much try and make a black and white version of it with only black and white, no greys, and that helps you sort of see sort of strong value relationships I suppose and it gets you used to sort of thinking well why did they do it that way and it helps you translate it into your own work but again I'm not knowledgeable enough in that yet to talk about it too much. So there's a pattern there and what I liked about that pattern is I would say value-wise that purple and orange are quite similar. You know, they don't particularly overly contrast with each other. And I think that it's quite a nice um, combination. It's a simple pattern and it still blends into the background. And that's what I wanted for that shape. It was quite a big shape to just leave solid and I think the patterns broke it up but the pattern hasn't overly attracted the eye to it. And I think having the contrast of the pink and the green next to it actually attracts the eye more. And obviously we've got the highlight colour of the yellow, the saturated yellow either side of it. So I think that we've put in enough to, to, for it not to dominate the picture and to stay in the background. Now, so this is me looking at a second pattern here, but this isn't really what I wanted. Those big circles are quite dominant and so they will go. I do feel this orange is a bit, um, it could be doing with just being slightly more grey toned. But I'm pretty sure we don't use it in a lot of places actually. And although that's a big orange piece, we do put a pattern on it. So that's a much better pattern. It's smaller and it's less... Um, perfect circles if you like so this is me getting into the remember I talked about making batches of colour now that I'll use repeatedly and so what I do is I use the edge of the tub and because these are heavy body paints they just stay in position so you'll see towards the end that each edge of that tub will have a different colour on it. I think the canvas I definitely used much more grey tones than I've used with this. But that's okay because it's actually really interesting to have the colours look quite different but 
they're still the same colours, so they go well together, the shapes are similar. So this is another pattern as well. This is me getting towards the final, you know, this is how I want it to be. And the next stage after this will be the kind of tidying up stage. I've tried to use the patterns to give the illusion of movement as if it's kind of undulating and like squeezing, having to squeeze through a gap. Um, so it's having to twist and turn. I may have, I, I could have probably been a little bit more subtle with the stripes, <laughs> but it's fine. So this is me trying to balance the colours now as well. And we've still got that bright blue there. Do you know, I hope that, um, I hope this has made sense and I actually hope that I'm correct um, in what I'm saying about the colours. But like I say, I'm confident that, you know, I, I, I have picked up the basics of this and, you know, but obviously there is much more detail to learn. Oh, and the blue's gone now. So what I've done here is I've used that blue to fill in the gaps and the stripes, but I've done it quite roughly, so we've still got hints of that green coming through. And this is me adding in some of the lines. So after, I'm just cleaning up the yellow again. And then I'm going to start doing some of the sort of tran semi-opaque purple outlines. Now, most of these colours on, in fact, all of the colours on here are opaque because they've all got black and white on them apart from the yellow and so I'm hoping that the you know having that purple outline as well as it being the darkest it's also you know the transparency plays a part in helping it stand out as well I'm glad that yellow is back there So this is it here, the purple. So it looks like I'm actually outlining everything to start with, but I'm not. I'm just putting in enough to, you know, really add definition to tidy up. And then I come back again with the colours and add in some more line work with that. But do you see how it really stands out because it is so dark and it's also um, like a pure colour? I like adding wee bits of it as if it's, you know, into the solid shape because it gives the illusion of you know, that there's a kind of twist and turn or a bend or a squeezing through. It gives, it makes it look more like a, a fluid object. At this point, I realised as well, I was drawing those outlines very stiffly. So, you can see I've started controlling the paintbrush a bit less and that has actually helped give a much more natural outline which helps with the whole 
look of that I want for the shapes. So it does look like I feel like at this stage the purple is kind of taken over a little bit. It's it's definitely as if it's outlining everything and it's taking on quite a block look, but that will change. So I'm looking forward to trying this in the gel plate as well with the colours, thinking about, you know, um, the saturated and the unsaturated, the hot and the cold. I really want to fast forward to <laughs> adding in the other colours to show you the difference it makes. I didn't intend to add it into the round the orange there but it was so untidy looking that I did so this is me coming in with the other colours now and this actually helps as well see the the balance that you're maybe looking for this helps with that that too you know I obviously felt there wasn't quite enough orange um and so just it go it allows me to just add a hint of it where necessary, and there that's quite a light lilac that I've added there, which actually contrasts with the dark purple on both sides. So I really think it was the making of the painting, kind of mixing up the 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 shapes and the lines like this. It almost quietens it down a bit when you kind of remove a bit of the purple outline. I just do think that some of the, you know, that I've learned about this colour theory has really been, it's been what I've been needing for the ages to improve. And I'm hoping my thoughts on it have been helpful for you too. So this is us at the end. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye.